before we get started, I got a couple of sticker shout outs. The first one is for the COVID-19 vaccine. I got my first shot the other day and three weeks from now I'll get the other one. And then two weeks after that, life for me is going to be starting to return to normal, I think. And if we all pull together and do the same, maybe it can return to normal for all of us. Don't worry about the microchip. That was a load of BS. And the other one is the We Like to Make Stuff Facebook group. Now, this is a group that was started by the Maybe I've Said Too Much podcast, but there's a whole bunch of really great makers over there. Go check it out if you're on Facebook and you want to associate with other makers. Uh, they won't let you in if you don't answer the questions. Well, friends, on the other side of the wall behind me is a two-car parking bay, and in that parking bay is a project that I need a mag-based drill press to complete. I don't have a mag-based drill press, but today we're going to build one. Here we have a pretty cheap drill press. It's variable speed. Not much range, but I don't need much. And this here is an electronic lock. And the magic that makes it work is this electromagnet that is supposed to hold 600 pounds. And here I've got a power supply. Well, that's made out of steel. If I could replace that with a piece of aluminum. Now, for reasons unknown, some companies hide screws under labels. So you'll break it when you try to take it apart. All right, there's my electromagnet, and I have a feeling it needs to be encapsulated in aluminum. Because if you put it in a piece of steel, that piece of steel is probably going to eat up all the magnetism you generate. Here we are at the hardware store. And somewhere in that mountain of aluminum might be what we need to build this new framework. Over there at the scrapyard, I found some stuff I could use, nothing that was quite right. I found this piece of tubing that uh, is pretty thick wall, so that's nice, and it's made of aluminum. Uh, it was a little bit too large in diameter, so I had to turn it down on the lathe. And then I, uh, it's also too short, but it was the only piece that I could find. So I also got this other piece of tubing over there, and uh, we'll just interference fit those together with a piece of threaded rod, and then weld it. I know there's a tool for this. And I also found this piece of rectangular tubing that is just right. We'll make our new magnet holder out of this. Then we'll weld this onto it. So this is looking pretty good. That, that fit is pretty nice, except this is really hot because I just sanded it for about 20 minutes to make it nice and flat. Now I think I'll drill a hole in this and, and bolt this onto it. That way I can weld it all together at the same time. And I've decided to go ahead and add a gusset in there. So you see I have my gusset here and one thing I've decided to do is make what they call a strong back. And what that'll do is go up the back side of that tube and it'll reinforce that joint. And uh, what I'm having to do here is just cut a tiny sliver off that piece. 
Now what I've done here is I've set up the spool gun on the welder and if you're not familiar with the spool gun it uh, basically has the wire feeder in the gun and that's because you can't push aluminum wire down a six foot or eight foot uh, uh, MIG welding hose. And I, I don't mind telling you, I'm no big fan of this thing. It leaves pretty ugly welds because I use it so infrequently. Uh, TIG would be a way better way to go, but my TIG welder is even worse than my spool gun. Okay, so this is welded together now, and it's not the prettiest weld, but uh, I've never had one of these ugly welds break. Now we'll come in with a transfer punch, locate the holes for our electromagnet. Hopefully there will be enough space between the top of the magnet and and that hole that I can run the wire up through the middle of this to get the power to it. Well the clearance is a little bit tight to fit my larger wire because this is the only wire I got. Okay that should fit just fine. But I think I want a little more clearance so I'm going to go ahead and hog that out a little bit. Now here I'm soldering the wires and covering them up with some electrical tape and some heat shrink tubing. You want to always make sure you insulate this stuff so it doesn't get a short circuit. And there we have it. By some strange twist of fate it's still squared to the table. Now we can move on to the next step. So we have our magnetic base here and the next thing we need to do is get power to it. And I've got this power supply which should provide enough power to, to do the job. The question is where to put it. I think just right on the side of the drill press will be fine. But it also needs a switch. And that could prove problematic, so let's uh, take this thing apart and see if we can find a place to put a switch. Okay, now looking at this, it's not looking too bad. This is, uh, it's got metal gears. I'll, uh, I'll clean and re-lube those. They should be fine. Lube the bushings and the end of the motor. There's no space inside here to store the uh, the electronics of the power supply, but I can fit a switch. And this thing's pretty old, so I don't want to risk breaking it by drilling it, so I want to take it slow, multiple steps. So what I've done here is I've got the, uh, I've tapped into the line coming in from the, from the wall, run it through this switch. So anytime it's plugged in, this switch gets power. When I turn the switch on, it will send power out this line, and that will go to the power supply mounted on the side of the box. All we need to do now is make sure none of these wires get pinched in between everything else that's going on here. One thing you want to make sure is uh, the handle of the switch is up when it's on, something they did not do at the factory on this thing. Now before I get too far, one thing I want to do is plug this in and make sure it still works. Well, it didn't smoke, so that's good. Okay. This is almost together. This is almost done. All right, now that, that is as low as it goes. And if that's as low as it goes, it's too tall. Power supply's on, and I heard a sound. Oh man, let's try to drill something. All right, let's try this. Okay, well it held drilling aluminum. Okay, let's try a piece of steel. Okay, well that worked, and it held just fine. So apparently I made the tower too tall and because of the strong back and the gusset I can't just lower it down. So I'm going to have to cut those off. Well let's try this again. <laughs> okay, now I've cut out a section, smoothed off the top, leveled it, bolted it back in place. Now let's weld it back together. Maybe I'll get a better weld this time. Now a couple things about the spool gun. Clamp down your workpiece and ground right to the piece. Because one of the things that it'll do is it will push the workpiece across the table before it strikes an arc. That's one of the reasons I hate this thing, but it does give me a way to weld aluminum. A couple people commented on my complaints that maybe if I preheated the, the aluminum it might help. Well, that's actually looking quite a bit better. 
Well, it's a little bit better than before. In any case, it's good enough. And you know what I say about perfection. It's the enemy of good enough. Okay, now this is better. Let's turn on. All right. It's stuck. All right, let's drill something. Well, that is all I need this thing to do, and it works. It worked fine for the test, but let's try it in the real-world application. This here is quarter-inch thick angle iron. I'm going to have to drill dozens of 1364 holes in it so I can tap quarter-20 threads into it. And it's going to have to be a horizontal drill like this. Well, that worked pretty good. I call that a success. So I'm into this thing about 55 bucks for the electromagnet and the power supply, and then I think I gave 20 bucks for this drill at a yard sale. That's not bad for a mag-based drill press that will do the job I need it to do. I'll leave links to the power supply and the electromagnet in the doobly-doo below. Um, you can cobble it together onto whatever drill you have. Now judging by the motor and the gearbox inside, it doesn't have a lot of power, but it does have more than a hand drill. It's only got a 3 8 inch chuck on it, and I'm good with that. If I need a bigger mag-based drill press, it's probably going to be much larger, and this will not be enough horsepower to do the job anyway. So I'll just rent one from my local welding supply. Anyway, that's all for this time. Thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. Please stay safe during this pandemic. Let's all get vaccinated so we can get back to a normal life. Have a good one.